Welcome to the Love Cars on the Grid podcast, your global motorsport roundup with me, Tiffany Dell and Paul Woodman. Welcome to Love Cars on the Grid, your global motorsport podcast, where this week we go around the globe. F1 in Austria, also IndyCar, NASCAR in America, Spa 24-hour GTs um, in, in Belgium at Spa, home in the UK, Donington World Superbikes. Uh, but I don't like starting off on a bit of a negative one, but really, really sad weekend in terms of yeah. uh, deaths in motorsport. Uh, the former Force India boss, Bob Fairley, uh, <laughs> and also really sadly as well, Steve Neal, the father of BTC legend, really, or superstar, uh, Matt Neal. So um, I know you probably touched base with Steve a lot more than Bob, but, uh, but, but any death sad will come on to probably the most yeah. tragic of the weekend uh, in a moment. Yes, but, that uh, young lad, Delano van Hoff, the Dutch kid. But, but yeah, yeah, just go to, the, to the, the, the people, the British guys. And Bob Fernley, a huge character. I mean, he was the former uh, boss of, well, semi-director of, of Force India, but he was a right wheelie. I was very lucky because I raced for him, and he was a lovely. We up north. He was a, he was you know, a second hand racing car dealer basically, but he was full of all the gift of the gab. Quite a character. He he spot, helped Jim Crawford, a very talented British driver yeah. in the in the seventies. They went to America together, and they won the Can Am Championship and ducked and dived and dealed. And I think it was because I think Bob actually sold a Grand Prix car to VJ Malia, the, the the future to be Force India buyer, who was with his massive uh, brewery business in India. And he used to race once or twice a year in a Formula One ensign around these little um, Indian uh, air, airfield tracks, really, and used to win everything. You know, nobody else had anything more than a sort of Formula Three car. Um, but he had to stop racing because of his family commitments. And Dad said, "You can't, um, you can't race anymore." So Jim Crawford raced, came over to India, and then the next year they wanted more competitions. So I joined Jim Crawford. We had two former Atlantic Chevrons, and uh, I won the Bangalore Grand Prix, and Jim won the Madras Grand Prix, which was pretty much a bit of team orders going on there, Paul. You know, I hate to admit <laughs> it, you know, but team orders have always been around. Um, and so, you know, he got this association with VJ Malia. Then when Malia bought, uh, who did he buy? Did he buy Stuart or did he buy someone else? No, he bought the Dutch Spiker team, didn't he? Created Force India uh, and got Bob to run that. He was very much a character of Formula One for several years before, um, of course, Aston Martin got, well, Aston Martin came in and bought it with the Strolls. And so Bob was out of that job. He did have several other jobs since. But yeah, a lovely, lovely character. I mean, yeah, he's only 70 years old and sadly he's passed away. Um, Steve Neal, of course, you know, a huge presence in BTCC for the last 20 years, you know, obviously yeah. running his son, Matt, um, with his team dynamics. They, they won three championships for Matt, three for um, uh, Gordon Shedden, of course. But Steve was a great race driver himself. I, he was this huge sort of six-foot giant, well, probably taller, a bit like Matt. And it was one of the stars of mini racing in the 60s. Amazing. And I can't imagine... And, and, and if you up. cast your mind, mind back to how many was in the 60s, if you've yeah. seen one now, oh, they're tiny. They're absolutely yeah. tiny. Yeah, so uh, yeah, two great characters of British motorsport, you know, sadly passed away. But, uh, you know, Delano was his young talent, you know, passed way too soon, you know. Oh, and, 18 uh, years of age, my goodness, I know. it's heartbreaking, it really is. It's brought any, any age is sad. Thing. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's so similar to the Antoine Hubert crash. Um, it's the same part of the race. I mean, people are saying it was on the Hummel straight, but I think the problem happened, happened coming out of Radion. Uh, already a couple of cars, I think, it's fun. They restarted. A lot of questions about should they restart the race. They'd already had a red flag and had to have a restart. So, um, and, and if you didn't see it, the reason being is because the weather was awful. It was, it was yeah, terrible visibility. This awful spray. visibility. And uh, somehow or other, you know, poor old uh, um, Delano, he, he got sight, he was parked sideways across oh. the Hubble Strait at the beginning. And another truck couldn't miss, didn't see him in the spray and, and T-boned him badly. Um, because because we'll come on to IndyCar a bit later, but Simon Paganou had an awful uh, incident yeah. in, in, in P2 practice. Um, but as long as they keep rolling, keep rolling. Just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Yeah, and but that when dissipates it, when the it's energy. Like that, exactly, station. it's okay. And, and modern race cars are so yeah. uh, so safe, but when you get T-boned in the side like that, poor lad, yeah. poor family, just can't imagine. But it, and it's, it's brought you know, this great Eau Rouge corner back into... I hardly ever agree with Lance Stroll, but uh, of all the drivers, I don't know why he was the one that was quoted over the weekend saying, you know, that Spa has to do something. You know, this cannot happen ever, ever again. And for just for once, I think I'm agreeing with Lance Stroll. I mean, I know all the enthusiasts, diehard... I'm a diehard enthusiast from the old school. 
but but Eau Rouge has outgrown itself. All the Grand Prix cars are full throttle to Eau Rouge yep. and Radio. All the GT3 cars racing the support yep. race later on the trip, they're all full throttle. It's not the challenge. It's spectacular to see because of the climb up the hill. I it's not a challenge. And of course, when you come over the top, the left-hand bit of Radio, you're, you're aiming for the sky. You've got no idea what's over the top. Yep. And I think the other problem is with young drivers and the whole world of motorsport, we're actually nowadays... You don't think you're going to get injured. We're all so confident. No, we're not going to get yeah, hurt. But you were the same when you were younger. Everyone's no, the I, same. No, I knew there was danger, I can assure you. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I had friends killed and stuff, so even in my in the 80s and the 70s. But we still knew it was bloody dangerous. We had plenty of broken legs and arms and, you know, fractures and, and spinal injuries. So I think these open, wide, safe circuits have created these young single-seater drivers, this, in, in, you know... Invisibility. In, in not invisibility, inf infallibility was the word I was looking yeah. for. And they just drive flat out all the time. You know, they don't think anything's going to go wrong. Um, and so they drive close and they make errors and they fly off with the runoff and come back on again full throttle. They don't back off at all with those runoffs. You know, they're not like grab, doesn't slow you down. Um, and so they're, they're all doing that. And this top of the radio, I think now we've got to slow them. I know a horrible chicane, but I'm, you know, look at the pictures. I'm convinced that you could turn a bit more left at the beginning of Eau Rouge and move the uphill right-hand corner. It's just a track width to the left. It's just, just the make blindness. It a corner. It's, it's just completely unsighted. That's the, yeah. that's the bad so thing Well, it. then you'd slow the exit out of radial. And also the trouble is on the opening laps, if, if people go a bit wide in the long right-hand uphill, they then straight line it, Which miss out do. all the track limits, completely inside the, the left-hand kink that is radial, and they stay full throttle. And then they rejoin the people that have gone round and some of them will be spinning across in front of them. So because you can't put a dangerous uh, corner, I mean, if, if there wasn't that runoff at Radial, Radial would be a challenging corner and everyone would go into single file <laughs> to go through Radial. Yeah. But now they don't. They go two off to the left, two off to the right, and they're all staying full throttle. So the only answer to me is to slow the eau rouge element of that complex you leave ready on the same but get everyone back almost into single file or two abreast with a sharper right hand but so maybe I agree maybe with spa won't even be here in another five years maybe yeah, well maybe. It'll, it'll be there as a circuit i think i mean they spent billions didn't they although you at eau rouge they moved the barriers back even further they made that yep. huge grandstand on the top they've, they've spent millions of pounds upgrading it to, to stay with the formula one but I just think it's a corner that could be changed without moving any of the new barriers or anything. They could just move that track left in the middle of Eau Rouge, which would make it, you know, a fourth gear corner or something, just slow it down. And then, then you're just accelerating up the hill through, um, through Radion. Yeah, and of course, uh, yeah, so the, yeah, the, very... the, the Formula 1 boys are there in a couple of weeks' time. Silverstone this yeah. weekend coming in they're there in a couple of weeks' time. So. Yeah. And, but the thing is with Belgium as well, the Spa, is one of the reasons it's always so challenging is because of the weather. It's, uh, it's yeah. a bit like the UK. You can be changes. sunny one moment and changes so quickly. And on that Kemmel Strait, the, the spray seems to hide in the valley. It holds there. It doesn't blow away that easy. It's got the big mountain to its left. And Yeah, it's terribly, terribly sad. And, you know, so it's just huge condolences to, to you know, Delano's family. And um, as always in motorsport, we move on. You know, some tweet saying, you know, oh, how can we possibly race the same day? I mean, you know... We I do. Fear, we move I fear on. Every single it's, time we're not too. insulting anybody. We're not insulting it's anybody. We grieve. From it. Yeah. We have a minute silence. We'll we think we about, think him, about yeah. them. Yeah. But the, we, we move on. It's just that we move on quicker in motorsport than maybe in normal life where you, where you tend to think about we things for long. The show must go on. I told you a million times on, yeah. on this podcast. If anything happened to me in a race, keep going, keep racing, well, race in my memory or just have a pint for me afterwards. But, um, but So keep, comments keep, below about what you think yeah. about Eau Rouge radio changing. Um, okay. To me, my full run boys over in Red Bull Ring. Let's oh. start with qualifying because, I mean, crikey, it was action-packed. Oh. I think, you mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, I think, <laughs> and I, I, I was out with uh, Joe on uh, Saturday night for a beer, I th uh, one of my catering buddies, for those who I don't know, but... Um, Catering, you're in catering now, are you? Cool? Uh, no, catering, 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 you buddies, cool? oh, catering, catering buddies. But we we reckon that qualifying has become far more exciting than the actual race. So let's talk about qualifying first. And of course, there were two qualifying's, but um, it was. Uh, did, did did you find it exciting? Did you watch much of it? And too much qualifying, too boring, too many track. I moved on. I've moved on. I've blocked it all out. <laughs> 
fact that apart it's from worth... Sergio, apart from Sergio, we always give a hard time. We'll comment, we'll praise Sergio. Finally, in the main race, Sergio came back to his almost his correct position. But yeah, poor old Sergio, three track limits. And the trouble is that uh, it's a stupid corner. And so many corners like Cops at Silverstone, they have a fast entry that tightens. And if ever you design a corner like that, it creates an t- early turning point. Anyone that's driven around a racetrack will know that it's at, um, Cops at Silverstone. You turn it very early because it's a flat entry. But then you shoot away from the apex and then the curb cuts in back on you. So, of course, your car is now aiming straight at the curb. So you then have to turn a bit more. And you can't see those lines. So I, I've sort of said you need, you need some sort of curb. So as the drivers are almost going over the white line, you'll hit something that sort of bumps the car to wake you up. What a load um, of rubbish you can't see. Of course you can see the lines. Yeah, you if, can't. You go, if you go over the... Yes, you can. You're driving a car. It's right, in front okay. of you. I've, I've done a video at Thruxton from Church Corner, which I've yet to tweet, which I will tweet now. I'm in the BMW saloon, got 100 miles an hour, and, and you've got the red and white bit of curb that then turns to green. Yeah. And it's under your bonnet. You, you can't, you, you're, you're looking. You're going sideways when you're doing no, the No, I'm not on this. I, I drove this at 50 miles an hour to take the video. I shall put the video. So you really, it's almost impossible to be that precise. So you need a bit of something, you know, a vibration strip or something. There needs to be some more audible way of telling you you're now approaching the limit. So you back off. So we're going anyway, to so what, what, was so about talking about ex- what was good about qualifying? Nothing was good about qualifying apart from ah. apart from Lando qualifying third for the sprint race. That was a real high for McLaren. Well, I and Char- that. Charles was pretty epic in qualifying as well. He was uh, in, in the, the main race qualifying. He wrestled that car around the circuit. That, you see, so moved on. So we're done with the sprint race. Sprint race was a bit of fun. The only bit of fun was, was Checo getting the start, then putting Max on the grass. Uh, going down t- towards the kink of turn two, then at turn three, Max doing the pucker old Max back to his best Max block past. He just went down the inside of Perez and showed him the exit onto the track. <laughs> and then the radio's kicking in. Checo's, what's up with Max? Max gone mad. And then Max, and we go, Checo's, Checo gone mad. And after all, then then just Max won it. Well, so anything else happened in the sprint race? No, but you're right about Max, and I can't. Do you know what I can't wait for? Because he is just in a different class at the moment. Different I can't wait for a, a two, three, four years time. Whenever the tide turns, and it will turn, <laughs> when he starts losing again, or when he start, not it. losing, when he starts having to battle for uh, it again, because he can't handle it. He he no. can handle it now, and he's all chipper, and he's like, oh. <laughs> Oh, very good job, guys. You're going to have to wait a long time. You're going to have to wait a long time. Yeah. Um, another lovely bit of the sprint race I did make note of, though, the fabulous um, Stroll getting ahead of Fernando for fourth and fifth and then getting on the race and uh, tell, tell Alonso we're just, we have to catch. We're good in these positions. We have to, <laughs> we can't do any. Um, I think if you'd let Fernando buy lots, maybe he would have caught the sides for third place. But um, that was a lovely bit of radio message. We're not racing. Let's concentrate, not race. <laughs> Yeah, well. And Nico well. Hulkenberg qualified fourth. Another Hulkenberg happy day in the sprint and dropped to sixth. Uh, and poor old Lando, after they, Max made that big bottleneck at turn three, everyone's almost worth stopping. Lando's anti stall kicked in, which has happened before, hasn't it? Other people off the start. And so he dropped to ninth in the end, didn't he? Killed but by the, his own anti stall. The McLaren looks a lot better. That's, that's yeah. encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then the race were just track limits, track limits, all with people changing tyres, pit stops, virtual... I hate virtual safety car giving someone an advantage. Stop, close the pits, like NASCAR and IndyCar do. Yeah. Don't let people gain an advantage because you've gone to virtual safety car. Yeah. I mean, it's OK, so if it's a full safety car, everybody gains an advantage. But the virtual safety car can actually change positions, which seems ridiculous. You can actually overtake during a safety car period. But it's not as ridiculous as letting people... Change tires with a lap to go to get the fastest lap. Oh, that's the most. The nerve. I mean, it was. I mean, ninety percent of the viewers must have been hoping one of the mechanics dropped the flipping wheel <laughs> because what a cocky bunch! You can throw away a Grand Prix win going for one more point when you're already leading by about three hundred points. It was the cockiest. Con- um, con- call. Congratulations, Max. I, I <laughs> think they called that the clean sweep. Oh, yeah, thanks, guys. Yes, yeah, really I couldn't good, believe guys. they did it. It just shows how they, they're just <laughs> full of cold. It was an amazing ah, decision. The, the conference I mean, is no... phenomenal, isn't it? With their car, yeah. with the driver, brilliant. Uh-huh. And the pit crew as well. <laughs> I liked also the race with Sites. We had the Ferraris chasing with, with uh, 
um, Leclerc ahead of sight. So they, and Carlos, you know, how we did, I forgot what his sarcastic radio call was, you know, what do, what do you think of the pace? It's obvious what the pace is or something, because he was behind. He was spending 65% of the lap in DRS. <laughs> so, of course, you're going to stay with Leclerc. But it doesn't mean that if Leclerc let you by, you're going to be faster and pull away. I mean, the radio messages, that, that was driving me mad as well. I mean, he's been off track. He's been... Norris saying about Lewis has been off track. He's on track every corner. Lewis about someone else. <laughs> he's off track. He's off track. He's off. He's breaking the track limits. Oh, God's sake. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I don't even know what the result was. I refused to log on today to find out what positions changed at the end because well, I couldn't I, be bothered to even, looked, even looked, look at it. Yeah, there's not, not that much change. But Lewis lost the <sighs> place to George, I think, um, by a second in the end because he got another 10 seconds. For those who didn't see, there was a load more penalties last night after yeah. the race. They've got to sort that out. I, I'm not sure what the solution is. We spoke about it a few times. But the reason being is because many teams complained, said, hang on a minute, you gave us a penalty. Oh, Why no. didn't you give Mady Boy a penalty no, no. Lap- 52 oh, no. or whatever it was. Oh, no, oh, no, because they can't monitor it all. They have enough stewards. They have a thousand stewards. Uh, but let's praise Sergio Perez. Just for once, Sergio, he did do a good job. He got through from, what, 15th on the grid after he'd uh, been penalised for his three track limits, um, up to third. And okay, so that was Let reasonable. me ask you a question. Where would Max Verstappen have finished if he was in the same race and started 15th place? Well, he would have won it, obviously. Yeah. No, we're not saying Sergio's as good as Max. I'm just, pra- I'm just praising Sergio. Get, get off his back for a minute. Just this one <laughs> program. Leave him yeah. alone. But yeah, leave yeah, him alone. I'm not on his back. I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate that he has got the most phenomenal tool at his disposal, the the Red Bull car, and he's bang average in it. He's he's. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. So right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, right. yeah, he's a lovely man, no, right. I'm sure, and, uh, yeah. and, and clearly he's a very talented good. driver. You give that car to Lando Norris. Do you know what they should let's do? Let's let's move. Give, My... give sign. Do what they do in football and um, sign. No, Lewis, no, Lewis, get the student. No, Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen for Red Bull next year. That would be. We nice, all hope it? Lando goes to Red Bull. I think Lando to Red Bull would be magnificent. Oh, I'm not sure Max yeah. did or Ferrari because I've got to. I need someone to leave McLaren as we move on to our next story in a minute. But let's just quickly <laughs> mention Lando did get from fourth to fourth in the Grand Prix, uh, which is a good result for him. Uh, Science was really upset again because he pitied. They stacked them behind Leclerc, didn't they? In the virtual safety car, so Science lost a place, got upset. Fernando, good fifth, ahead of the two Mr. Mercedes. Off after all that excitement in Canada when we'd seen the new car was going to work. Um, very disappointing for Mercedes. They were struggling badly again. So now I think the whole thing. I mean, it's a spectacular-looking circuit. You can, lots of DRS overtaking attempts, late braking. But just with the track limits and the moaning of the drivers and the no, another Grand Prix that sort of annoyed me more than it pleased me. I, just, you? I tell you another. Yeah, I I I I turned over and watched cricket um, for for a big chunk of it. I had it on both. I had it on my iPad and my um, my TV. Um, we have to mention as well. Just looking at the updated list, Albon. I thought he was phenomenal. Um, yes. Fighting every inch of the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, wrestling that um, that Williams round. That's twice I said wrestling a car today. Um, Piastri, what a big difference between him and I thought he was going to come in and do a bit better. Well, he qualified you? badly. I don't know. I don't know what Piastri's problems was. Um, the American Albon's mate, he had a quite a good run until he got pinged for the three track limits. But, um, the rookies haven't done so well. Uh, no. Anyway, so support yeah. races. Yeah. Oh, you've got more well, Formula One? No, nah, just my conclusion was it was we've got much old. more exciting racing to talk about. We need to move on. Yeah. <laughs> Former two in Austria, the uh, sprint race won by the American Jack Crawford, who was uh, the 10th fastest qualifier, so his pole position and won the sprint race, stupid things. Um, the main race actually turned out to be a cracking race at the end, ruined by the Comet. I don't know which but I mean, Comet, I always catch that. He was just shouting and screaming. I had to turn the volume right down to one. I can see it. I can see what you're shouting about because I've got a TV screen with pictures. I can see that cars are side by side. I don't have to be shouting that to be told they're side to side. I'm watching the telly. Oh, God. Anyway, it became really exciting only because there was a safety car or virtual safety car. I don't know which it was. Virtual safety car in the middle of the race. I think it was a full safety car. I've forgotten which. Um, Because as usual, the first half of the field start on the faster, softer tyres and the back people start on the slower, harder tyres going for that double. So the guys up front want to race. And right on half time, right when everyone was swapping tyres, and the front runners had worn out their faster super softs. Um, the the, the soft tired mid pack 
all of a sudden leapt, overtook the ball because they were now on the better tyre. They closed the gaps up they'd lost by being on the wrong tyre to start. And so, yeah, the winner was the Dutchman Richard Vachur, who sadly lost the race a year ago when he didn't have enough fuel. He won it. There wasn't enough fuel left in the tank, Paul. And it's the, the, the delight of the Dutch fans, Maxi's fans, the whole, those orange grandstands. It's so Amazing. impressive, to be honest. Yeah, they are. Yeah, he came from 11th on the grid to win the race because he had the right tyres for the last 10 laps. And Ayu Iwasa came second. He was from 16th on the grid and had the right tyres. The strategy just swapped mid-race. So all the people who've been out, out front more legitimately. If only Frederick Vesti, who, who did start on the harder tyre, softer tyre, and had switched the harder tyre, he managed to hold on to third place from second. And his teammate, Ollie Behrman, the only Brit in the race, he had another. He came from 19th to 4th. Uh, by having the right strategy and driving very well. So spectacular stuff. Uh, the sprint race, that, yeah, that was it. So good good racing, ruined by the commentator, but really good race. But, but you know, again, it's artificial. It's like IndyCar or, or NASCAR, which the Europeans don't tend to like so much. You know, it was a, a race turned on its head because there had to be a safety car. So it ruins all the strategy. You can work on your strategy all night long, but if you get a safety car at the wrong moment, your strategy is turned upside down. Absolutely. Uh, Formula 3 sprint race won by the Estonian Paul Aaron, actually from 7th. In the wet, you can catch up from those sprint races. Uh, best Brits in the sprint race was Zach O'Sullivan 4th, Johnny Edgar 5th. But then in the main race, we had Joy of Joys, a final British winner in Formula 3, and Zach O'Sullivan drove a really good race from 6th yeah. on the grid to win the main race. Uh, and Johnny Edgar came up from 16th to 6th. So some good British performances in Formula 3. Our hopes for the future. And then the Porsche race, another brilliant race, it not was. spoiled by ever commentates on the Porsche race. Please put your name below and say that was me. Um, didn't shout too much. A brilliant race, fantastic race. There's three cars up at the front. And nudging, pushing tactically um, with our Harry King. That I think he'd been pinged for track limits. Uh, he came from 11th up to third in Porsche Supercup. Very difficult to overtake, got no DRS. Uh, so a cracking fight going on. Um, but uh, it was Harry King's teammate, the Dane Bastian Boos, Boos uh, who upset the Dutch. The Dutch nearly got another win because Larry Van Larry Ten Voorde, um had been leading almost for the last three laps before he got biased, passed by Boos. Um, cracking. But, but in the end, the front three were all track limiting on every lap. <laughs> I don't know whether they just gave up. In fact, maybe if the lead car in a bunch goes off, and the ones falling both go off, then that should be negated because nobody gains an advantage. Well, it sounds like BTCT. There's, there's something to think about. Yeah, if, if you're all doing it, then don't be. Well, I, think that's, I, think that, I genuinely think that's how they get away with it in British touring cars and, because they well, all do it. If five of them do it in a row, then you yeah. don't. As long as the lead guy does it and the second one. But it, they were off every lap coming out of turn 10. But it was a fabulous motor race without DRS with some great overtaking. But I enjoyed the Porsche Super Cups. So, conclusion on the Formula One Austria? Yeah, five out of ten. Yeah. Do, do, Nothing do, do, really. Lots of midfield going on, but it's, it's always A, you have DRS, and B, you have cars on different tyres. So, you do get quite a bit of overtaking in the midfield because some have just stopped, they've got the fresher rubber, and then they'll have to stop. And then they got re overtaken by the people that they were behind that they overtook. It's now got the better tyres that overtakes them, if you get what I mean. So you do get a lot of that fun-looking racing midfield as cars have different amounts of grip. Um, you should, but, but you should general. never, ever have... I don't want to go on about Checo, but I'll tell you that it was his fourth <laughs> consecutive race that you didn't oh, get into P3. You're doing the stats three. now. You're no, doing no, no. the stats now. No, no, jo jo joking aside, but you shouldn't have a car that starts 15th so frequently or starts towards the end of the pack and finishes on the podium. It shouldn't. And he was ill. You little mm. sympathy. He was food poisoned. He was feeling weak in the race. You mentioned you food poisoned. Actually, that, who's the committee? Have you seen the, the comic that does the golf? Yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, the golf. Sorry, I thought he, no, I thought he does thought golf and Formula he started, with, he started with golf. He now does Formula One as well. Do you know him? No. Everyone must know him on Twitter. And he's done one with Carlos. Because he does all the interviews after the race. You've not come across him. Well, I have to find his name. The, the, the impersonator. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen him, of course. Yeah, he's amazing. So Sergio came on and said, oh, I was a bit like... <laughs> and he said, I, was, I, I went down to Ricardo for dinner on Friday night. And he, he served me these prawns, told me very good prawns, eat more prawns. And then the, then the Ricardo character appeared behind him on his podium invitation with a golf club in his hand, about to hit Sergio on the head and say, you want to play golf? Oh, I'll play golf. 
Very good. It's um, so but, funny. Before Brilliant. the race, before we move on, uh, before the race, uh, Christian Horner said, any talker replacing Checo is wide of the mark. He said that before the race, which I still think is quite surprising. They must they must have... Thought... He wasn't pleased with him after those three track limits, though, was he? When, when he was interviewed, he said, you know, yeah, what's just he have to stay with the line. What's he doing? You just have to stay within the line. Right. At least one lap. Can we move from Austria to uh, America, please? Let's go to America with the two great races. Well, the IndyCar wasn't a great race because mid-Ohio, where we were racing, is a track where overtaking is very difficult. But it's fabulous to watch IndyCar. I mean, it leaps and crests and dips and dives. There's a curb about a foot wide and then there's grass. And uh, then there's a wall. And they never have and, problems about track limits either. Well, no, because you go on the grass, you, you, you get out of shape, you have to back off. That's the whole yeah. point about when you go over a curb, there's a bit of a rut or dust or dirt. And also as a spectator, this is what annoys me. When you see the car kicking up the dust, you go, oh, it, it, it sort of shows to you in your brain, bloody hell, he's on the limit. You know, he's just kicked up dust. He's half, you know, he's got off the road. When they exceed track limits, there's nothing that tells you as a spectator that, that he's gone too fast or too wide or he's about to crash or he's on the limit. And so that's what I love about an edge that's either got gravel or something physical. So you can see that he's, oh, blimey. And there's so much that around mid-Ohio. And it's just a fabulous trap, beautiful. Remote. And there are gravel traps in the faster corners, as Simon Paginot was very grateful for. <laughs> if, you, if you haven't seen that, you need to oh, just have a look on Twitter see. or Google or something. It's just, I mean, it's just frightening. Just go barrel roll, barrel roll, barrel roll, but at 100 miles an hour plus, 100 miles plus. Because I mean that that slowed him all down. I can't find it. I can't. We all know he means that, that impressionist is brilliant. Um, so yeah, Pagano couldn't race because he had so many G's of uh, spin. He must have gone around six or seven times. Um, but, but I say nobody's about to overtake. Pat Award in the race proved that you flipping well can overtake. He um, he spun off and caused the red flag. We caused the red flag. You don't get any of your qualifying times. You're at the back of the grid. So he started twenty fifth. And he got up to eighth place. He actually turned, he, made, he made it to a three-stop race. It's one of those races where you can do two stops if you save a bit of fuel here and there. I mean, like flat out, you'd have to have three stops. And he ended up eighth. But he, he said after, he, he overtook everybody at one stage or the other. Um, it was a fabulous drive by him, and he was overtaking everywhere at mid-Ohio. Uh, but really, it was another race lost by the Andretti team who, um, with poor old Colton Herter, who rode America the week earlier. They pitted him a lap too soon. So he couldn't get to the end driving flat out, had to save fuel, drop from a dominant first place to about fifth. This time, he led most of the way, and then he got done for speeding in the pit lane himself. So he had to do a drive through. So another race lost by Andretti's Colton Herter. Um, and Graham Rahal, the great Rahal, took me out to India, my host at Indianapolis, who didn't qualify Indy. They've got their team really going, but he qualified second, was running second, led for a bit, and then at the pit stop, he had a left wheel not go on properly, and he dumped down the field. So through it all came this Alex Pelot. And this is what I'm talking about with McLaren need to lose a driver. Yeah. Because he had his fourth he, win of the year. He looks, he looks special. It's just Yeah. There's never any ragged car. There's never any on the limit. You don't see him driving the car fast. And he gets out with his young, freshest face with no sweat, anything, speaks <laughs> eloquently about everything. Like he's just, I mean, I think he's an absolute megastar. But um, and McLaren have got some sort of. They were the, he was the driver that McLaren tried to steal off Chip Ganassi midway through last year to put him in their Indy car for this year, uh, and, and Ganassi held on to him by legal manif- legal ramifications. But um, McLaren, of course, haven't got a place for him. So whether he can sneak through somehow into a Formula One grid, I think Lando needs to. That's why I said Lando's got to move. So then I think we get Polo into a Grand Prix car and see how well he does. I was just looking at how old uh, he is, uh, 26 years of age. So he's, he's yeah. no young spring well, He's been around. So, well, no, he's yeah. been in Japan for two years. He won the Jap- Japanese Super Formula Championship, I think. And then he came to Indy and he, he was champion last year. And he's just developed into this really good driver. So it's Frighten, simple. Frightening. It's very simple, Tiff. Uh, Lando to Red Bull. Checo can do some lovely stuff you know, all around yeah. the world. And um, the Alex goes to... Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. There you go. Um, but it was a great trip. It was just so lovely just to watch a car because, as I said, you see them getting to the edge of the curb and on the limit, a bit of oversteer and understeer. Um, frightening shunt on the first lap was shown yet again how not halos in their state, but their aero screens. Marcus Ericsson went over the top of Felix Rosenquist and there was this black tar mark across his aero screen. And that would have that would have landed 
on his steering wheel if it hadn't been for the aero screen. So once again, these safety things that we all didn't really like the thought of um, saved. You can another you can engine. imagine having Formula One now without uh, the halo, could you? I know. Right? No, I think the aero screen's a better thing because it stops everything coming through. You know, but uh, I don't. Know. I mean, a veteran Scott Dixon of Will Power came through the second and third, but it was just it was Palo all the way really. Once once Herter and the Andretti team had shot him in the foot again, well he shot himself with the speed limit. Um, also NASCAR, where was NASCAR? The NXT, just quickly NXT, the Formula oh, Two, course. as yeah, I call yeah. it, the Formula Two. You don't because apparently it's not powerful enough in your books to be Formula <laughs> Two. Um, finally, Louis Foster, the Brit, the won the Indy Pro Championship last year. Rookie in, in Indian X this team this year. He's had two poles. He's been knocked out of the lead. Great win. He followed the pole man until about three quarters of the way the race. Did a very, very bold overtake down the outside uh, to take the lead. And finally has got that win and, and the, the monkey off his back. He's now fourth in the championship. And Jamie Chadwick had a solid race. Qualified 12th. She's less than a second off the pace. She's getting closer. Um, she had a good battle, actually. She had some level of, you know, drivers. I mean, she had a really good battle. With um, Anam Ahmed, this um, Indian or Pakistani, whoops, one or two English. He's, he's a British A or B. He says that's his nationality, we didn't check what he was. But he was Formula 3 champion in Britain in 2017, and he's been over to Japan racing Formula 3. He's been in America for... So he's, he's not a slouch. Um, and Jamie Chabot had a good battle for him to end up 10th place. Um, good. So Jamie's yeah, having a better go. NX team. Uh, but by the way, the, um, the impersonator is Conor Moore. Colin Moore and uh, Anam is uh, Pakistani, Pakistani English. I think he puts his that's he puts his both nationalities. He, well, he was um he was up for he was on the Autosport Awards one year. So that was well, British, according right. to uh, India NXT, very clearly that's a Pakistani flag and no other. All right, okay, okay, yeah. correcting me, and he corrected quite often. <laughs> And then we go 300 miles northwest of America. The best show of the weekend. I mean, <laughs> this it, was, was it that good? Was oh, it? <laughs> I watched it all this morning. I could. I was waiting to stay up during the night, but then it got. There was huge amounts of. I thought the race would never run. Uh, they had to shorten it slightly. I think. Um, so it was still where a three-hour race. Where were we? Chicago, the streets yeah. of Chicago, the okay. first ever race around the streets of Chicago. There might be one years ago, but I don't know where it was. Um, you know, 37 cars out there, and I thought it'd be big mayhem because it was. It was. Part tarmac, part concrete. You know, concrete in the wet's got awful grip. Um, but eventually, they got started. Actually, there weren't that many shunts. They were beginning. There were quite a few dumped it into the um, dumped it under the tire walls. It was quite interesting. They would go under the tire walls. These NASCARs. They had the tire walls with the conveyor belt strips in front. And when they went in, because there was about three tire or four tire de- depth, they would go under and they wow. couldn't reverse out because they were trapped. So they had to have a full course yellow and tow them out. But there was hardly any damage to the cars. They were going in heavy. But I'm surprised um, because I thought they would have been the opposite. But I guess they do go down quite wedgy. Yeah, like, yeah, they've got wedgy noses. Yeah. Uh, but of course, the whole story is about you know this, this Shane Van Gisbergen, this New Zealander that we've talked about. about I've raved about in the past. He's won in singles, Formula Ford champion, New Zealand Formula single seater champion, supercar champion, super just a mega uh, driver. And he qualified third behind Denny Hamlin and Tyler Reddick. Um, and he wrapped, oh, got hiccups now. And of course, Jensen Button, who, who qualified eighth. So there's a lot of interest from, from outside of America in the race. Um, the opening laps, the, the ones on the pace were Denny Hamlin, uh, Tyler Reddick, who qualified second, and Christopher Bell came through to lead for a while. He seemed to be the man of the moment. And Van Ginsburg, he sort of ran fourth and fifth early on. But of course, there were shunts and yellow flags, and Jensen Button got turned around and had to pit. Um, and they started all wet, so they had conditions of wet, so these big old cars lumbering around lots. So you could hear them on board traction and oversteer and couldn't get grip. Um, and then it went to dries in the end. There were a couple of braking zones that said little rivers across them. So really tricky conditions. They had one pile up where they blocked the road completely. And then there was about 20 cars unable to move till they got themselves three-point turning. So anyway. red flag. Red flag or not? Not on that. No, never red flagged. They had some full course yellows. I think on that case, it was just a full course yellow. So anyway, move on through all the many strategies and changes. You pit, you tie, you've got to fuel up, you've got to decide when to stop, when not to stop. All of a sudden, with about 16 laps to go after, a, I think it was that big pileup on yet another one that went off and under the tyres. Justin Haley, who started 37th, right, having crashed Out of in how many? I can't remember. 37. <laughs> 37. Was uh, leading. 
Now, that, this is what you can do in NASCAR with the right strategy, a good driver, overtaking, 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 jumping at pit stops, getting a strategy. He was leading the race. Well, Shane Van Ginsbergen, the, the, the previous yellow, had, had pity from the leading bunch. Um, and he wasn't actually leading at that stage. I think he was about third or fourth. Uh, again, behind Christopher Bell and Tyler Reddick and Denny Hamlin. So at the restart, he was like ninth. Meanwhile, behind him, Bell and Hamlin, they all crashed, tried to catch back up through the field. Whereas Van Gisbergen just came through, picking them off, picking them off. And with luck, I think it was three laps to go, he took the lead off of poor old Haley, who was, you know, desperate at the end. But I mean, for such a story, you know, and he came to Van and he cruised. There was another yellow, he had to do, he had to do another yellow restart, because there was another, yet another full course yellow. But he stayed cool throughout it all. And just did the greatest donuts and burnouts, and he's just a charming guy to interview. He's just a mega star, and uh, the America just took to him, um, and yeah, it was just a, a great show. And, and he, he, someone retweeted a tweet he did so many years ago, how many years ago, five years ago or something, saying uh, he knows the national anthem off by heart, American national anthem off by heart, because of all the NASCAR races he's watched. So he's a huge fan of NASCAR, Brilliant. Like, pretty true. And to dream of this moment to be racing in NASCAR. And they said, you know, would you take an invite? Would you come back and race? And he said, you know, he's contracted to Aussie Supercars next year. But, you know, why not in 2025? So I thought, I mean, he's 34 now, you know. Yeah. The Americans are calling the young driver. <laughs> young driver from New Zealand. <laughs> uh, it was a three-hour race, you know. All the drama. The number five last, he was, he was up to about second at one stage. He ended up finishing fourth. Uh, and again, another comeback. Kyle Busch uh, finished fifth. And he was the first to get buried under the tyres. So he came from last wow. place, having been buried to fifth, because you can do that in NASCAR with strategy, yeah. overtaking, a lot of luck here and there, you know, not to get punted out. With and where did, where did number five in. come? Mr. Larson. That was the five, yeah, last and fourth. He was in the mix. He was, he's always in the you mix. Said Carl Kyle Bush, Larson. You, you said Carl, oh, Carl Bush. Bush was buried. That's the other Carl. Right, OK. So the Kyles were fourth and fifth. OK. Get with the Kyles, will you? <laughs> the other one's the number eight, the eight. The eight. I knew that. So Bush. great entertainment. I mean, it's not purist racing by any means, but it's the storylines you get out of NASCAR, the characters. I love the uh, fact that they, they're calling him a young driver at the age of 34. Yeah, I There's hope for us yet, Tim. So, yes. Let's go to Spa. We've already spoke about Spa. Yeah, a little back bit. to Europe, obviously under an awful cloud at Spa, you know, because the, the young lad had been killed there early in the morning on the race day start. Uh, the race went ahead, um, and these these twenty four hour races now are ridiculous. I don't think I could. I, I wouldn't have been fit enough. There were eight cars on the lead lap. Eight cars. It's like Le Mans. They're just sprints nowadays. But why? Um, but I, it just amazes me. I can't even get my words out. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> uh, what I'm saying, but when they are, they're on the and they're literally fighting each other as if it's uh, a, a, a three lap every race. lap. Yeah, and they got twenty four hours to go. Their team mates and their team must be just to have their hat, their head in their hands. They're so fit, these drivers. So they're just really good. Anyway, it was BMW came out on top. The ever four, Austrian Philip Enger, uh, German Marco Whitman, and the British driver Nick Yellowly, who one week ago had taken the first win for BMW in their LM. DH yeah. car at Watkins Glen six hours. And what a time Nick Yellowley's happening. I mean, nobody knows who in Britain, but he's just gone from winning an IMSA race to winning the 24 hours of Spa. And uh, hopefully one day in the future, he'll have a Le Mans 24 hour race win to his credit. But, That's uh, what you call a purple patch. Yeah. We've got to mention our mate, Ollie Webb, who uh, who's on a TV show with us and he's just a, he's just a good guy. Uh, Ollie did the 24 hour at Spa. Oh, was that? Yeah. He did a couple of stints, I think, and then at four in the morning, he left, drove to Le Mans and did the Le Mans Classic. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That's six hours drive, I think. But Very I'm, cool. I'm Very sure he slept cool. in the car and didn't drive. Well done, Ollie. Yeah. Yeah, was he driven? Yeah, yeah but was the back to the main was it? Yeah, Mercedes was second. Now, no, sorry, no, no, and Ollie, he probably had a helicopter actually, so I don't yeah, feel yeah. sorry for him. <laughs> Uh, Porsche fourth and fifth, sixth and second BMW sixth, and one of the drivers of Valentino Rossi, who's a popular runner now in the GT3 world, and then two more Audis. So, pretty impressive. A quick mention one the Gold Cup was about four classes uh, out of the Spa 24 hour race, maybe even five. But 10th overall, the winners of the Gold Cup were the British team of Simon, Sam Dehan, Tom Gamble, Charlie Fagg, and Dean McDonald, who might not be British, um, in a McLaren. So, good congratulations to all of them. Great results. 
Um, I didn't follow the race much. There was so much going on this weekend, but it is the classic. It's the big GT race of the year. And then we come back to Britain for Donington Superbikes, the world superbikes, not British. And it must be, I'm sure it was a great day out for motorbike fans, plenty of overtaking, but Bautista won two of the races, Les Gap Yoga won one of the races, had two second places, and Jonathan Ray had two third places. It's a bit dull, though, is it? It's a bit like the Max Verstappen show in World Superbikes. It's, but it's, it's not, the is Alvaro it, it Bautista. It he wins, but he's not dominant. I mean, it's it, he's well, Bautista dominant. Well, has become pretty dominant. Yeah. But, I mean, the racing's still good. Bautista didn't lead all the laps. was overtaking. I mean, he was down that's, third that's or fourth. What, that's what race. I mean. The, the yeah. fact that he's clearly... Over, yeah. the, result, the result's always the same. But before you get from the start to the result, there's overtaking going on. And, and of course, bikes are always spectacular. What do you see? The man on the bike and the leaning yeah. over and the... The jeopardy, there's jeopardy in danger. You know, you can sense that they're, you know, in danger half the time. One good thing for British fans. The wobbles they get, the wobbles. Oh, no, the... I know, oh. I know. High sides. Was one night, the third race, was a, there was three went off with a huge high side, took two others out. Uh, but Scott Redding came through to fourth on his BMW. He's had a miserable year with the BMW, but uh, I'm sure the British fans uh, would, gave him a big cheer. He's coming back. So, But, yeah, well, as we say, bikes are always entertaining, even if the same man wins all the time. Yeah. That's it. That's a that's a yeah. nice succinct a, little roundup. A sad weekend, obviously in many ways, but a very busy weekend and some entertaining motorsport, and that's where it's all at. What have we got coming next week, please, Tiff? No, next weekend again. Oh, we'll be busy looking back at next weekend because we've got the British Grand Prix, of course. I'll be there. Former two, former what three. Have, what, what do you mean you'll be there? You'll go now with motor passion. Yes, I'm entertaining oh, guests. I mean, I'll be in a box drinking. Well, yeah, there's no space, no free spaces in these <laughs> corporate entertainments, you know. Not like the good old days when just pass a ticket over the fence, back in again. <laughs> um, um, so make sure, you, when you go to the British Grand Prix, I can't stand it when people don't watch the support races. or they get, They're get they in the shops buying bloody merchandise. Yeah, when people the enjoy the day out. Oh, some people want to just, just go pop the your head out. For watch the full Watch for Ollie Behrman. Go yeah. and look for Ollie Behrman, the only British driver in the former series, so hopefully without the front. Next, the next British Grand Prix driver, I feel without doubt, the next British driver to join the Grand Prix grid one day soon. Um, and in Formula 3, we've got three or four or five drivers. Uh, obviously, we mentioned Zach O'Sullivan after his win, and Johnny Edgar, and there's others and others whose names I've forgotten. I'm sorry about them. Let's look at the front. And of course, Porsche Supercup. Go and cheer on Harry, Harry King. Our, I think he might be still leading the championship or not. So go and cheer on Harry King. Support the Brits at the British Grand Prix. Um, or if in Italy or anywhere else in Europe, go and watch the, the hypercars hitting Monza. Spectacular around there. Always a great track. If you're in America or more specifically Canada, the IMSA prototypes, the Le Mans prototypes, they're going around Mossport. Fabulous racing track. Um, again, pretty dangerous, but fabulous to watch. The Academy ladies are at Monza, having almost their penultimate weekend. Whereas um, down in Australia, Shane Van Gisbergen will have a huge hero's return. They've got a round. I'm not sure where it is. Down in Oz this weekend coming. Back home, we've got British Superbikes at Snetterton. So if you want to go and watch live motorsport of major level for Superbikes at Snet. Or if you want to go to an island somewhere, there's some electric buggies in Sardinia. Bouncing around in a field, um, which you probably can't go and watch because you're not allowed to. But you can see on television. Extreme E at Sardinia. I'm going to contact Extreme E and see if we can go to a watch one. Maybe it'll change your mind. Uh, <laughs> top tip for whoever's going to come second at uh, the British Grand Prix? Well, obviously, Lewis is going to win. This is it. This is when the moment comes. There might What's be a, a tap so, at so the first corner. There could be a tap at the first Pick corner. Pick and Max are going to have a crash in the go. first corner, are they? They're going to... George, George they call it. I mean, it's... You know, We've, we've hardly had any... When did we last have anyone actually lead Max into the first corner? I think someone we did haven't. it. Just, Max, just, until, they just blow straight, blow straight it, past them. Until Austria, until the, the virtual safety car Austria, Max has led every race for 249 laps. Oh, that's right. He's he had led every he? single race for 249 laps. So nobody has. Uh, if he can just make one bad start and fall to fourth or fifth or sixth, but then, of course, he comes back to wins. He will make I, a bad start. No, but Ferrari... Oh, no. I mean, so what, he, what, what hours is his lead? 23, when he pitted with one lap to go just to get oh, fast. It was, lap. it was embarrassing. It, it, it was... He is phenomenal, but what he's not good at is when he's amongst it. So if you've got, if you've got cars that start catching up the Red Bull, that's when it's going to become interesting. That's when he'll start throwing his toys out the car again. Yeah, pointy, aren't you, your finger? 
Eh? Well, when because... you get going like that, that's a bit pointy there. That's right. a bit of a Max finger, isn't it? We'll, we'll, we'll see you no, next Lewis. week. Was it Lewis? I'm getting angry, finger? so I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks see you at the British Grand Prix, everyone. Cheers. See you.